We're going to learn the closed variation of the Ruy Lopez in this video. So the Ruy Lopez begins with e4, e5, knight f3 hitting the e5 pawn, knight c6 guarding it, and now the Ruy Lopez move is bishop b5. This is the beginning of the Ruy Lopez, otherwise known as the Spanish opening. So let's talk about the point of this move, bishop to b5. Well, the knight on c6 is defending the e5 pawn. So moving the bishop to b5 attacks the defender. So it indirectly puts pressure on the e5 pawn. If we were to capture the knight on c6, there no longer would be a defender of e5, and we might be able to capture it. Turns out it's not that simple, as we'll see, but we are putting indirect pressure on e5. We're also putting indirect pressure on d4, another important central square that this knight is hitting. Okay, In the Ruy Lopez, white often wants to establish a pawn on d4, and it's usually prefaced by the move c3 first to prepare it. So a lot of the theory revolves around uh, the central uh, dark squares. In this position, there are a lot of moves, or few moves, that black typically makes. Um, the most popular is the move a6, hitting the bishop. Let's talk about the point of this move. First of all, I do want to point out that if we do take the knight in exchange, Black should take back with the D pawn. That will keep white from taking on E5. Let's see, what happens if white takes on E5? Why can't we do this? Why can't we remove the defender and then take that pawn? Well, it turns out in this position, black has three different ways to recover his pawn. Okay, the most popular method is queen to d4. It's probably the best method. It forks the knight and the pawn. And in this position, the best move for white is knight to f3, hitting the queen and giving up the e4 pawn with check. You can either move to f1 and spoil your castling rights and trap your rook in the corner for a while, or it's better to move queen to e2. And then black can trade queens and uh, spoil white's castling rights. The position is about equal, though. Um, we're really just slowing down white's development by drawing the king up to e2. White can castle the old-fashioned way by hand. He can put the rook on e1 very soon and tuck the king back to f1. So this isn't incredibly good for black. It's about equal. Black did get the pawn back, though. So that's why removing the defender in this position is not really a threat to win a pawn because of this move. I did mention there were three moves, so I just want to briefly talk about the other two, which aren't as strong. Another one is queen to g5, forking the knight and the g2 pawn. In that case, the best move for white is knight f3, giving up the g2 pawn. And then the rook comes to g1, and the queen has to go to h3. The rook might even go to g3 next, and the queen will have to retreat somewhere. This also gains the pawn back and spoils white's castling, but white's developed a little bit better in this line than he was in the last line we looked at. Black just opened up the g-file for white's rook, so this isn't considered quite as good for black. White can also castle queenside later on. Okay, and yet the third move that black can play in this position to regain his pawn is queen to e7. And the point is, you're threatening the knight, and once the knight moves away, you can get the e4 pawn behind it. Uh, white can either move the knight now and lose e4. Okay, in fact, that could transpose into what we looked at earlier. Same position we looked at earlier. Or better yet, White can actually push to d4 here. That's stronger 
and then black can push to f6, uh, making the knight retreat, and then get the e4 pawn. But then we have this blocking move with the bishop, and so we can retain our castling rights and white can castle. And so this isn't, again, as strong as uh, the original line we looked at. So again, um, this is the Rui Lopez, a6, very popular move. We'll talk more about that. You can capture that knight. That's called the exchange variation. Black should recapture with the d pawn. But white should actually not take the pawn on e5. As we saw, this is not an attempt to win a pawn. That's the correct best way to respond. Okay, So let's back up. In this position, um, we're going to continue down a different line. Um, it's not quite so popular to take the knight on c6. It's not a bad move. It's, it's got a name. It's called the exchange variation. It's perfectly valid. But much more popular is to retreat the bishop to a4. Now, as we saw a moment ago, white wasn't really threatening to win a pawn on e5 because his own pawn is weak. But the reason black plays a6 is because in a few moves, maybe after white gets castled and protects e4, the e5 pawn might be under serious attack. And black has inserted this move a6 so that whenever e5 is in danger, he can immediately push the pawn to b5, blocking out the bishop so he can retain his control over that pawn with his knight. So that's the reason for this move a6, to get in that move b5 when needed. You may wonder why doesn't uh, black just get it in now right away? Well, you can play like that if you want to, but it has some drawbacks. Uh, after bishop to b3, white argues here that these pawns are a little bit um, badly placed. They can be attacked. Okay, For example, uh, let's say we make a couple moves here to some random moves. White might attack those pawns with a4. And if black exchanges here, then he gets this isolated a pawn, which can come under attack and be lost. Okay. So that's a weak pawn there. If black doesn't exchange, sometimes he might move his rook over to protect b5, and white can exchange, and now white has the control of the a file here. And sometimes other bad things can happen uh, with these pawns here. So it's something black has to consider. So he holds back on playing b5 until it's necessary. Okay? He doesn't want to overextend his pawns on the queen side. All right, so what does uh, black play after bishop to a4? Well, continuing down the main line of the closed variation, black plays knight to f6 hitting this pawn on e4. Now it turns out white doesn't really want to guard that pawn. There are two natural ways to do it. One is with d3. The reason white might not want to play d3, which is a playable move, you can play that. But the reason he might not want to is because of the plan we talked about earlier of pushing c3 and d4. Okay, he wants that classical pawn center. He doesn't want to waste a tempo moving the pawn to d3. Another natural way to guard e4 is knight c3. But again, that goes against his plan because he can't push the c pawn. So white doesn't usually guard e4, instead he castles here. And he argues, well, if you do take that, eventually I'm going to get my rook on the e-file here and I'm going to pressure your pawn. This is a perfectly acceptable way for black to play. This is called the open variation of the Rui Lopez. Knight takes e4. Um, turns out before moving the rook over to e1, it's useful to play d4 first, but that's an entirely different opening than the one I want to discuss. So black often doesn't take on e4 because of the counterplay down the e-file. So instead, he develops his bishop on f8. A couple of places you probably would consider putting that bishop. Uh, one is on c5. 
Now, this is a little hard for me to understand why that is nowhere near as popular as placing it on e7. I think one of the reasons is that when you put it on c5, it's going to be subject to losing a tempo because of white's plan, c3 and d4, hitting the bishop. It's going to lose a tempo. Okay. Um, another reason you might play it to e7, it's kind of a vague reason, I'm not positive about this, but it might just uh, block up the e-file here and keep the black king a little safer. Yet another reason is to uh, guard the f6 knight here in case a uh, bishop comes to pin it. Okay, I'm sure a lot of experience and history went into um, the reasons why this move was settled upon as the main line move in this closed variation. By the way, right around now is when the Lee Chess database calls this the, the closed Rui Lopez. Once you play bishop to e7 instead of taking, this is called the open Rui Lopez. It's an open position because the pawns in the center are going to be exchanged and things are going to be wide open like in a typical king's pawn opening. But if you play bishop e7, we call that the closed variation because we're going to keep these pawns locked up at least for a while and the position remains a bit closed. Okay, so what does white do after bishop e7? Well, since he castled and he wanted to guard his pawn on e4 earlier, but it wasn't convenient to guard it, he guards it now because it is convenient to guard it with the rook. The rook belongs on the e file anyway. So he guards this pawn. Now, white finally is threatening the e5 pawn here. Okay, for example, black could make a mistake and forget about that e5 pawn and just castle. If he does that, White would remove the defender of e5 and then take it because his e4 pawn is guarded by his rook and his king is safely castled. This fork no longer is effective. That pawn on e4 is guarded by the rook. White would simply drop the knight back and attack the queen and the queen would have to move away somewhere. Okay, and white would continue to develop and retain his extra pawn. Okay, so white, after sliding the rook to e1, has e4 under control and is now threatening e5. So black has to do something about it. So now is the time black finally pushes b5 to block that bishop from removing the defender. Okay, and white's forced to drop the bishop back. Okay, and now in this position, one of black's plans is knight to a5 to hit the bishop on b3 to try to gain the bishop pair, take away one of white's bishops and retain a pair of bishops himself. Okay, Cran masters often talk about the, the, the bishop pair being good. Okay, having two bishops versus a bishop and knight is usually a small advantage, maybe a large advantage in some cases. Okay, but he can't do it now. If he does it now, he drops this e5 pawn. So he prepares for it by playing d6 first to protect e5. So now he is threatening to win the bishop pair. And there's an added benefit to this move d6. It opens up the diagonal, and the bishop can come to g4 here. Black doesn't have to play d6 in this position. There are other moves. For example, castles is a good move here. And the intention of castling is to keep this pawn back on d7 because you may want to move it all the way to d5 in one move. And there is a variation like that called the martial attack. Okay, but we're looking at this mainline closed Rui Lopez. So mainline, we play to d6, threatening to win the, the bishop pair. So now white plays c3 for two reasons, to expand in the center, he was always planning on playing c3, but also to gain a, a square for the bishop to retreat to in case it gets attacked. Okay, so c3 is an excellent move here. Now black typically castles, and white would like to play d4, but doesn't want to do it in this position yet. Instead, the main line is to play h3 three to prevent this pin here, which can be very annoying 
if white plays pawn to d4 first and gets his knight pinned because that knight is no longer supporting d4. This knight may want to soon come to d2 to develop. For example, if he does it now, he just broke his defense of d4 and black is going to win a pawn. So playing the pawn to uh, d4 here and allowing bishop to to g4 can be annoying for white. Although there are a lot of games in the database like this, it's, it's still nowhere near the main line. So instead, um, white prevents bishop to g4 before he pushes the pawn to d4. Now, I remember asking this question myself a long time ago. If bishop to g4 is so annoying, why did black castle on the last move instead of playing bishop to g4 right away and then castle next. Well, I think the difference is playing bishop to g4 is stronger if the white pawn is already committed to d4 because that weakens the control over d4. If white hasn't yet committed to d4 and black tries this, then a typical way to play would actually be to push to d3, be more reserved, slower in your play, and then black might castle. And play might continue like this. We can kick the bishop. Okay, We can bring this knight out. It's safe to put it on d2 because we don't have that pawn on d4 to worry about. Queen doesn't have to guard it. And the point of white's play is to put the knight on f1 and then to g3 to hit that bishop, breaking the pin. The bishop would be forced back to g6, most likely, if it doesn't want to trade itself. And then after that, at some point, white can expand in the center with d4. Okay? And that bishop might be awkwardly placed on g6. So that's why... Um, Black typically doesn't play bishop to g4, would only pounce on that if white has committed his pawn to d4 first. So the main line runs castles. Then since white does want to push to d4, he prevents bishop to g4 first. Okay. And I'll end the main line there, but I'll make just a couple more comments. Um, there are three very popular close uh, moves in the database played almost equally often in this position by black. Uh, one of them is knight a5 as intended to hit this bishop, which then retreats. And one point of knight a5 besides making the bishop retreat is to free this pawn to be pushed forward to control d4. And we can explore that in another video. Um, another move in this position, strangely enough, is knight to b8. And the point of that is, again, to release the c-pawn and to redeploy this knight to d7. Sometimes redeployments like that kind of make me a little uneasy. It seems like black is wasting time. Why did he put the knight here if it's going to go here? Well, remember, it, it was doing something here. Um, sometimes a piece has a job for a while, and then the, the, its purpose goes away, and it needs to be repurposed. Okay, that happens sometimes in openings. Okay, and so that's a perfectly normal move grandmasters make, knight to b8 in that position. Another normal move in this position is bishop to b7. All of these can be explored in detail. There's a lot of theory uh, from this position right here. And in almost all cases, white's going to push his pawn to d4. Okay, that was my introduction. That's my understanding of the mainline closed um, variation of the Rui Lopez. Thanks for watching.